lying in the long grass, which is not ideal. So there we go. So there we go. We have one of the Birmingham boys. And this is the first male lion I've seen in months. So I'm super, super excited. I'm not 100% sure which one it is. It looks like it could be Tinio, but I might be wrong. We'll have to rely on all of you at home. Remember, hashtag Safari Live with the animal that you think it is. I think it is Tinio, but it's difficult to say. At the moment, all we've got is an ear and a mane. So it could, I might be wrong completely. It, the grass is very, very long. And I'm hoping as the sun comes up a little bit, it's going to start hitting him. And that might prompt him to move closer towards the airstrip and not just to go flat in this long grass. Because if he decides to lie down in this long grass, it's going to be very, very difficult to actually see him. But it's hard to ID this Birmingham from this angle. So hopefully you can see the sun is just behind him there. And I'm hoping as it kind of comes past, he might then decide to move. If he doesn't, what I might do is just go around a little bit. It seems like it's a little bit more open from the other side there. And I might be able to get a better view of him. But this is so, so good. I'm quite glad that we found him and the other interesting thing is that there is tracks for all of the sticks and their little cubs around this area as well so I'm hoping that he might start calling at some stage and maybe the others respond and we'll be able to find the little sticks of cubs they're so cute and I haven't seen them in the last three weeks so I'm sure they've already gotten much bigger but it would be great to find all of those little cubs again and have a look at them so we'll definitely be listening and looking out you can see he's busy grooming himself and I'm sure that's because he's been walking around quite a bit and he would have picked up quite a bit of dew in this wet grass. So it's just to get that coat nice and clean again. Also any parasites that he might have picked up. And at this time of the year there's quite a few sort of burrs and types of seeds that stick to you. And much like James was talking about yesterday evening about seeds sticking to your socks. It's the same thing for a lion. He ends up getting a whole bunch of things sticking all over him. And so that's why they go through this grooming process before they decide to lie down and sleep for the day. But I'm hoping that the sun is going to start now. It's interesting is that we didn't hear him calling much this morning. He did call probably, let's say, at about 5.30. So an hour before we got going. But other than that, he's been quite quiet, which is strange. So ladybugs and daisies, you say it looks like Tinio. Well, I agree with you. I think it looks like him, but it's very difficult to say for 100% sure. We'll have to wait until he pops his head up again and then we can actually get a better view. I will tell you one thing, though, is that what is quite amazing is I haven't seen much of the Birminghams in the last probably two, three months. We've had sort of sporadic sightings of them. I can't believe how dark his mane has gotten. It's gotten very ginger, and there's these black streaks running through it. So it's really, they do look a lot darker than what they used to, and they're starting to become quite formidable in the sort of size, and the manes are getting much thicker. So it really is very good to see them again. Now I'm hoping that the rest will be around. It's been interesting to see the sort of movement of the Birminghams. There's been, seems to be three that are hanging around together, and they've been around Simambili and have been moving quite a bit. And then there's always one that seems to be off on its own. It's probably defined that's because they're trying to balance their time between the Inkahumas and the sticks. And so you keep finding one will come down this way and the other one goes back to where the Inkahumas are and they just keep trading with each other. Because I know the other day when they had all three of them, Tinio was part of it. And it was in Supo or Nena, one of those two that was missing from the three. So it just seems that they're taking turns coming down to where the sticks are. Now you can see the light is just starting to hit the top of his mane. So I wonder if he's not going to start waking up now and moving. And I wonder if we can just go close in on his mane and see if there's any dew on it. Sometimes you get these little golden droplets of dew on there, just on the top. Hopefully he puts his head up like he did just now. And it will almost look like he's got these little sort of white spots all over him. But whatever he's doing, he's doing it with a bit of relish. He seems to be grooming quite confidently. So Wesley, you're wondering what he's doing. Well, he's grooming. He's licking with his tongue. Now, his tongue has got these little hooks on it that are able to basically pull off all these little parasites that he might have picked up, or the grass seeds that I was talking about just now. So he's cleaning himself effectively and getting himself prepped for a day of rest. Remember, the lions are now starting to come to the end of their sort of active period. they normally active around sunset, sunrise, and a little bit into the evening. And so they're a lot more crepuscular than we think. And you'll find now that he's just starting to groom so that he can then begin to rest for the day. So there we go. You can see his tongue's out, just grooming his paws now. And 
it is quite difficult to see through all of this long grass. But there we go. So, kitty cat, you're wondering if lions and leopards tend to stay out of each other's way. Well, leopards more so than lions. Lions will actively confront a leopard because they know they're much bigger and more powerful and they have the dominance over a leopard, so they'll assert that dominance. Whereas leopards with lions, leopards know that a lion is bigger and therefore a major threat, and so leopards will try and move away from lions. And often when you hear lions calling, you'll find leopards moving in the opposite direction away from there. It's not to say that it doesn't happen where there is interaction between the two and luckily for leopards they are able to climb so they can get into the sort of high branches of trees and try and get away from lions in that regard. They also tend to be a little bit more agile than these big cumbersome males but it's not to say that leopards don't get caught out every now and then. There was a leopard in this area called Wabayiza who was a son for Tundi and he was unfortunately caught by the sticks and actually eaten by them so it does happen from time to time. Now I'm going to think I'm going to try and just reposition a little bit because where we are is very difficult. All you can see is the back of his head. So I'm going to just try and see if I can't get around a little bit because really otherwise we're going to have a tough time of actually seeing him. There's also another vehicle that's going to come in so I'm going to just try and see if I can't make space for them so that they can also see. that will be a bit better for them as well now the problem is where we are is this black monkey orange now it's this hard woody plant and it sounds terrible when you drive over it but unfortunately it has to be done now while we try and reposition and get ourselves into a better spot let's go back to Jamie and see where she is and how she's faring on her search